So we previously looked at the Asus Zenith board for X399. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Now we're looking at the X299 board, the Intel board for the upcoming Skylake X and KB Lake X CPUs. This is a flagship. They have plenty of other X299 boards on display. We'll have some of those in the article below, but we're gonna focus on this today for the video. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair and their new Vengeance RGB LED memory kit. You can find out more in the link in the description below. The kit comes with hand-selected ICs for better overclocking, which will benefit these platforms going forward. So let's get through this board. First of all, X299, here's a new LGA 2066 socket. We've shown this a few times now with Gigabyte, MSI, and at least one other vendor at this point. We have the two sets of four DIMMs. Just to clear this up again, to make sure everyone is on the same page, Skylake X can use both. KB Lake, KB Lake X cannot. So KB Lake X will use one side of the DIMMs, normally the right side, typically uh, the others will go unused. That's just because the architecture is really a refresh of KB Lake, but with a new socket type. So that cleared up. Two sets of four DIMMs. The power design, we think, is an 8 plus 2. It's an 8 plus 2 phase uh, power design. I don't know the components. Uh, so can't really comment on that, unfortunately, though we do have it for most of the other vendors. So 8 plus 2, 2 per side, and moving on from power design, we can go look at the actual power, which in this case is an 8 plus 4 for the CPU, fairly standard for these boards right now. And then there is additional power input down here in a Molex, which we saw in the Zenith as well, and that's for your GPU power, which helps remove some of the load through the PCIe slot if you end up with a scenario where it's drawing too much power out of spec through the slot or something like that, or if you're just overclocking a lot. Uh, so that's the setup there. For other things like storage, there's a standard set of SATA. Uh, they have U.2 slots, which are becoming more common now, finally. Normal USB 3, and then a whole bunch of I.O. The I.O. includes 10 gigabit Ethernet, so that's kind of noteworthy. So you get 10 gigabit Ethernet on the board, and then there's also wireless AD, which is also noteworthy. AC is kind of old news now. Looking at the most obvious piece, which is going to be this plating here, or armor, or whatever they call it in marketing words, uh, the plating is somewhat translucent, so you can actually see the mock-up trace design with the LEDs on it. That's kind of neat. Uh, and then you have your bit gigantic chipset cover, which is largely aesthetic at this point because the chipset's obviously not anywhere near that big. Other than this stuff, uh, M.2 devices can be mounted on the board, under there right, for one, and then you can also mount to the DRAM card. So you see this extra slot over here, you've got four, four, and then one. That's not for memory, that's actually for an add-in card where you mount two M.2 SSDs on it. It's something Asus has had out for a while now, you can check that out uh, really on any retailer if you're interested in learning more. So I think that walks us through all the key components on the board that we can talk about now. I do not have a price. I don't have a price on any of the X299 stuff or on the X399 stuff. We do have a sort of tentative release date, looks like July for this one, so keep an eye out for that. We'll probably be looking at some of these boards in the near future, uh, but that's really it. That's all I have for you for now on the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme. As always, you can find more information linked in the description below in the article. If you want to help us out, patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.